Hey guys, it's Tom from Liftoff. Today I'm going to show you how to optimize your anti-spam settings in Office 365. To start with, open a browser and go to protection.office.com. Once the page loads, go to Threat Management, Mail Filtering, and then on the Custom tab, go ahead and scroll down to Default Spam Filtering Policy and click Edit Policy. Under Spam and Bulk Actions, I like to keep everything as move message to junk email folder so that end users can see caught spam in real time. If you prefer to unclutter their mailboxes, you can change things like high confidence spam to quarantine or delete. If you find that too much bulk mail is getting through, you can change the default of 7 to 6 or lower. And if you find that too many good messages are getting caught as bulk spam, you can change it to 8 or higher. 7 typically works very well. Okay, let's go down to the allow and block lists. Here you can add domains or senders that you either want to block outright or allow no matter what. I strongly suggest not allowing whole domains for group emails such as Gmail, AOL, Hotmail, so on and so forth. Only allow domains of companies you deal with specifically. Under international spam, I suggest leaving these settings as is unless you're getting bombarded with spam in languages who you don't otherwise do business with. Finally, under spam properties, under increase spam score, I turn on URL redirect to another port, numeric IP address in the URL, or URLs that include biz or info web at websites. Typically none of those things result in good emails. In our case, I leave image links to remote sites as off, as a lot of times people include that in their signature. Under mark spam, or mark as spam, I typically leave empty messages off. A lot of times somebody will send a coworker something like, let's meet for lunch in the subject, and leave the body empty, and you don't want those going into spam. Otherwise, I leave almost everything else on. All of these HTML items, object tabs, uh, tags, JavaScript, so on and so forth, are typically nefarious items found in bad emails. So I leave those on and mark those messages as spam. I leave the apply sensitive words list off. Uh, if you would like to mark messages with bad words and otherwise insensitive words as spam, go ahead and turn that to on. And then at the bottom, for SPF and conditional sender ID hard fails, I leave these selectors as on. And then finally, for the NDR backscatter, these are messages, uh, and non-delivery messages sent to you for messages you never sent out. I leave that on as well. When you're done, go ahead and click Save. And then once the policy saves, your mail filtering should be optimized. I hope this video has helped. Again, this is Tom from Liftoff.